Hi, even though Microsoft is now all focused on Windows 11, there can be a ton of reasons to do a fresh install of the classic and still very much functioning and useful Windows 10. With a fresh install, I here mean that the installation is not an upgrade nor a reinstallation directly from within Windows, but instead a completely new installation where everything currently stored on the computer's hard drive is deleted and then a new copy of Windows 10 is installed onto the computer. The only thing we need for the installation is a USB stick with at least 8GB of storage capacity, an internet connection and an already working Windows computer to help us put the Windows 10 installation files onto our USB stick. Also, before we move on any further, if you have any files that you want to keep currently stored on the computer that you are about to install Windows 10 on, now is the time to copy them to a safe space, because once we install the new copy of Windows, they will all be deleted. Alright, let's go! First, we need to create our Windows 10 installation USB stick. We do this by opening a browser window and navigating to microsoft.com slash software dash download slash Windows 10. We then scroll a little bit down and select the download tool now under create Windows 10 installation media. When the download is finished, we follow the on-screen instructions and open the media creation tool that will help us create the USB stick for installing Windows. Here we start by accepting the terms and conditions and then select the option to create installation media followed by a press on the next button. Here we then get to select a few options regarding our coming Windows installation, like for example language. If you are unsure which options to pick here, just choose your language and leave edition on Windows 10 and architecture on 64 bits x64, since that is the most common one on computers nowadays. Once happy with the language and edition settings, we continue again by clicking next and then we select the USB flash drive option because that's where we want our files to be installed. On the next screen, we then get to actually pick the USB stick in question. Here be extremely cautious and careful that you are picking the correct removable storage device for the installation since all data currently stored on it will be permanently deleted in the installation process. Now the install program will download our copy of Windows and then put all the necessary files for the installation onto our USB stick. This process can take anywhere between 5 minutes to about half an hour or even more depending on your internet connection speed. So if you haven't done the dishes already, now is a great time to do so. After the USB stick is finished, we then press finish and remove it from the computer used to create it. And now on to the actual installation. The first thing we do here, purely because of safety reasons, is that we disconnect any external drives like hard drives and USB sticks from the computer we want to install Windows 10 onto, after which we insert the installation USB stick into a free USB port on the computer. And now comes the probably trickiest part of the whole installation process, that is making the computer boot from the USB stick instead of its normal hard drive. Some computers actually picks up installation USB sticks and other media automatically and simply starts up with reading from them right away. Usually though, you will have to hold down one specific key at the same time as you start the computer in question to access the boot menu. Depending on the manufacturer and the model of the computer, this can differ, but usually to reach the boot menu and to be able to select to start the computer from the USB stick, you need to press down either Escape, F8, F9, F12 or the Delete key. On this Asus computer I'm using here, I for example need to hold down the escape button at the same time as I start the computer to make it access the boot menu. If you're not successful getting the computer to start from the USB stick, googling the model name followed by boot menu usually gives you the correct key to press. And after this is done, the actual installation process is pretty straightforward. First, we select our USB stick in the boot list to make the computer start off of it and not from its normal hard drive. We then get to pick a language to install and select time and keyboard format and input. After this, we select next followed by install now. Here, after having scrolling through the fine print and check the accept button, we then get to pick whether or not we're upgrading the computer or installing Windows only. Since we want a fresh install, we select the custom install Windows only option. The following screen might look a bit different than the one showing in the video. What this is though is that it's basically all the hard drives that our computer holds and all the parts that the drives are divided into, also called partitions. In fact, this computer, as most laptops, only has one internal hard drive, here called Drive 0. We can then see that Drive 0 has got four different partitions holding different parts of its current operating system. What we want to do is to completely delete all the partitions and just leave the Windows 10 installation with a big empty hard drive to install onto. On some computers, the USB stick used to install Windows can also be displayed here, in our case here named ESD USB. This one you do not want to delete, so if it appears, just leave it as it is. To delete the different partitions of the main hard drive, we then simply click on each partition and select delete. 
After all the partitions have been deleted, we are then left with our drive zero and a larger amount of unallocated space, which basically means that the drive is empty and not used for anything. So what we do now is that we select our unallocated drive and click next. From here on, the installation process is now smart enough to itself create all the new partitions and whatabouts it needs to install Windows. And now again, we sit back and wait while Windows 10 installs itself onto our computer. After a while, our computer automatically reboots. If the installation here restarts, you need to remove the USB stick and then restart the computer again to make the actual installation continue. Otherwise, just leave your USB stick in the computer for now. And now we are soon finished. After selecting our region and keyboard layout, we are then presented with the network screen that allows us to connect to a Wi-Fi network would we like to do so. Here, we can either choose to connect our computer to a network, however, this does also force you to also either create or in case you already have one, enter your Microsoft account to finish the setup process. If you want to do this later, you can instead pick the I don't have internet option to the left and then select continue with a limited setup in the same corner to skip a lot of the honestly annoying please use our 250 different services options during the setup. Regardless of which option you pick though, everything can be altered and set up after the initial installation anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. After then selecting a username for a computer, we click next and move through a few more questions regarding location and tracking, all of which also can be changed later on as well. After this, the installation finishes up a few remaining details before finally letting us into our new Windows 10 desktop. Here, the best first things to do is to enable our internet connection and then go into settings and select a Windows update followed by a press on the check for updates. Here, Windows usually finds a ton of updates. So now is the time to make yourself another cup of coffee while it all installs. Also, if one update fails to install the first time, just try it again and usually Windows makes it work. When it comes to activating your copy of Windows, the installation automatically does so if the computer or your Microsoft account has a license attached to it. Under the settings and activation menu, you can see the current activation state of Windows. You can here also enter a product key if you got one, as well as buy one directly from Microsoft. Would you like to do so? Also know that you actually don't have to activate Windows right now or at all if you don't want to. However, you will then be stuck with some limited customization options for the appearance of Windows. And after a while, a message will also pop up in the bottom right corner stating that Windows isn't activated. But other than that, it is actually perfectly legal to keep using Windows without activating it. After all the updates have been made through Windows Update, also make sure to set the screen resolution and scaling options to your preferred likings. This can be done by right-clicking on the desktop and selecting Display Settings. From here, give yourself a good pat on the shoulder for a job well done installing a fresh copy of Windows 10. Also, if you run into any issues, please share any questions down in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, bye!